Hello class, we're back again with demonstration number three. And today we're gonna to be looking at the pelvis from uh, various angles and we're gonna to begin to look at also the spine and some of its parts and how it relates the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis together. So all of you have a handout like this one. You might have a hard time seeing it, but um, you know which one it is. I, I talked about it in class in our last class period. And of course, it's gonna say the pelvis on it. Now, here at home, I only have half of a pelvis. I mentioned this to you guys in our last class with the skeleton, so this is kind of like a refresher because um, I wanted you to see the whole skeleton. So anyways, as we talked about in the class, anterior means front. So anterior, front, superior, above, inferior, below, um, and this is the iliac spine, uh, known as the pelvis. So this point here, which you've got to all get familiar with and be able to draw it from any angle, very important on the model, it's, you can locate it. It's known as the anterior front, superior, because it's above, iliac spine. And so this has a, a plane to it. The, eventually the muscle of the oblique rests on top of it. It's not a line, it's a plane. So we have to learn how to construct it well. Below it, we have the anterior inferior iliac spine. And out of this, you're gonna get several muscles coming, like this one, there's about five, and that's why this one's so important. This one, uh, the rectus femoris of your leg, the muscle, stems just below the superior. All of you have seen it on the model, but probably you've never recognized. Now you'll know exactly where to draw your lines. So this is superior, inferior, okay? Those are the top ones. On the handout I gave you, I'm kind of going in order. Uh, on the back of this, the back of anything, as you know, it is known as posterior. So this is the posterior superior, which is the top iliac spine of the back of the pelvis. And this is the inferior. So both of them have an anti, uh, uh, a superior and an inferior on the pelvis. The acetabulum is actually known as, if you look at the terms I gave you, this is actually known as the little vinegar cup. This is where your leg goes in. So the ball of your leg then connects to the neck, to the great trochanter, to the bone of the leg. This is the acetabulum, very large, so your leg can move in all directions and move around, right? Um, and then we've got the pubic bone. Now on here, you're seeing half of a pelvis. I showed you this in class, so the pubic bone would go across this side, and it's only this front piece right here. So it's about a half inch on this side and a half inch on this side. It's only about an inch across the front, okay? So you got the pubic bone. Now, where the, where the two pieces of the pelvis meet, it's called the pubic synthesis. And so there's a space right here. You gotta get familiar with it. If you're giving birth, this separates, right? So it separates at the synthesis. This angle, this is known as the ischium, this area down here. And all of you have seen cows. Cows have very big ischiums. We sit on the ischium. And there's a triangle here. If you see the two together, there's a triangle. And this is known as the, the, the pubic angle. So all of those pieces go together as one. You'll see it when I draw it out in just in a second here. Um, and then we get the... Um, uh, I think that's pretty much it here with the pelvis. And then is what we're gonna go to is the spine. Now with the spine, I don't have a whole spine here, but the top two pieces of the, of the spine are gonna become very important to us. I have them here, and so I know you're gonna hardly be able to see them, but you saw them in the classroom. The top one is known as the atlas. He gets its name because atlas held up the world, it holds up your world, it holds up your head. And, and when you look at it, when you see it, when you move the skeleton, it's got like a little cradle, so your head moves around in there, right? Um, and then the axis bone is this bone underneath it. So these top two, and this has this little neck on it. I'll draw it out for you. But this has this little neck to it. And this piece sits into the atlas like this, which enables your head which enables your head to kind of move around, okay? So these two become important pieces. 
Also on the spine, you're gonna get four areas. You're going to get the cervical, that's the top piece, which has seven bones, which will draw out for you that your head's gonna sit on. You're gonna get the thoracic, which has 12. You're gonna have the lumbar, which is the lower region, very curved in order to support all the weight of your body. And then you're gonna get the sacrum and the, and the coccyx. This is the sacrum. I have a piece of it here. The sacrum, if you look at it carefully from various angles and you wanna kind of get familiar with the bone, uh, it's known as a spherical triangle. It's a triangle that could conform around the ball. So it's not flat, it's a curve. You can see it from various angles. And of course, this thing has five bones to it. They're all, they call them false ribs. They're all fused together. And then the coccyx, this little piece down here, there's actually four small fused ribs together. Coccyx is Latin for cuckoo's beak because it kind of looks like a cuckoo's beak. Um, but anyways, that's our spine. So what I'm gonna do is, like I've talked about with past demonstrations, the only way you can memorize this stuff eventually is to have a measuring system. And we started off with our measuring system last week when we did the rib cage, and we found out that we used the cranium as a measurement, and it was a five-eyed cube. So I'm gonna continue to do it this way. So I'm just gonna do pelvis from three different angles. I'm gonna do it in the cranium so you can see the measuring system, and then we're gonna put the three pieces together in the spine, okay? So all of you need to follow along as I do this. So it's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the front of the pelvis first. So I'm gonna make it about this long. Now to do this, I'll make this dark enough so that you can see it. We're gonna make a horizontal line and a vertical line, so you're gonna make a square, so make them equal. So I'm gonna measure this. Mine looks a little tilted, but I'm gonna measure it, make sure they're about the right, good. So that's right, so what I'm gonna do is straighten it up a little bit. So, So you're gonna start this way. Everybody's gonna come up with one big box. In your box, go from one corner to the next and make an X in it. They say the best way to do this, if you've never learned this in a drawing class, is when you're taking a line from one point, don't think about the line between, just focus on this point, try to draw the line. So it has a somewhat of a, a quickness to it. And then just focus on your midway points. So in the end, it wants to be close. They don't need to be perfect, but you want it close, so I'm just gonna check it. This is very close, so we shall go with it. So each one of these boxes, of course, is a cranium. So we've got four craniums the front of our pelvis. Now, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna find the center of each one of these cubes by doing this. So we're gonna put our first piece to the pelvis in there, and the sacrum actually sits one-third within the horizontal distance. And so the easy way to come up with a third in the drawing is once you have the X on your cranium box, drop a vertical line, drop a vertical line on each of them. Okay, so once you have the vertical line from the center on each of them, take from the center of both of the cubes where I've got mine placed, and again, focus and draw your line and do the same on the other side, okay? Where, where that crosses the X, so the first big X you put on your box, hopefully you can see it well, in the video, um, but where it crosses, you drop a vertical line. So if I drop a vertical line on each one of these, that becomes a third, okay? So it's the easiest way to come up with a third. So if you measure it, you wanna make sure it's close. This is the first time you've ever done it this way. So that gets us pretty much perfect. Now, so that's, that's the width of the sacrum. It's a third of the horizontal distance. 
Now we're going to take an x here. Place it in. And at the middle of your x, draw a horizontal line. Now this is why it's important to use a measuring system, because it's going to help all of us come up with where our major landmarks are. Okay, so now that I've got it that way, it shouldn't be too hard to finish off the rest of it. So basically, here's our third. Okay, remember we dropped our angle, vertical, vertical, so therefore this is a third of the of our horizontal distance. This is our sacrum. Okay, so the sacrum from the front view is, because since it's a spherical triangle, it angles this way, our sides become concave. Now the sacrum is going to go down as far as the pubic bone, so this is another landmark. So dead center of the cranium length that we're using is the bottom of the sacrum. So very easy to use a concave now and come up with a nice distinct feel for the sacrum. Now, the way the sacrum is, is this is a concave as well. So it's all built from this front view with concaves. Now, our pubic bone, as I mentioned, is only about a half inch on both sides. So the pubic bone itself is only about as wide as this. Now we're going to make two of them because there's a thickness. So you'll see it for sure with the second one because the first one's riding on the same line, okay, is my construction line. Okay, so all of you should see it. So here's what we have to remember. Sacrum, it's right on our divisions of the two cubes, okay, this is one cube, another cube, you've got your sacrum. You've got to memorize this so we can turn them and twist them. Pubic bone falls midway of that, okay? Now, the, one of our landmarks that we talked about that was so important is the anterior superior iliac spine. It's to be found on the same line, okay? It comes in about an eye width from the box, so about right there and about right here, all right? So I'm going to make two little marks, okay? So this point, if you look at this bone, it angles in this way. It's going to angle in this way. It's not on a flat plane. This has three major planes to the ilium. There's one here, there's another one here, and there's another one here. So there's three major plane breaks. And so that becomes important on our pelvis. Our high point of the pelvis, which is here, falls exactly on our halfway point of this cube, okay? So therefore, our division lines should work quite nicely. So now, this is our high point. Our wide point, our widest point, which is here, falls a quarter of the way up of the hole. So we've got a half easily placed in our measuring system. So it's not too hard to figure out our quarter is about here, our quarter is about here, right? So make a little mark. So now we've got the front, we've got the width, we've got the height. So now you can make our wonderful curve, which will go in place like this. And so you do the same on the other side. I'm just going over it a couple of times just to get it dark enough for you. Okay, so there is the beginning of our crest, okay? We're going to watch this part because I've got one plane. You see the angle, two planes. So is what's going to happen from here. This is going to come down and go, if you're thinking of our construction lines, the angle I put in here, it goes a little beyond this point because this is... You're not going to see it in there, but we will see it in the classroom. This piece angles back in space. So is what you do is you bring this down a little beyond our construction line like this, and then you put a convex curve like this in there. And then you put a concave here. Okay, so this is 
I'm just going to edit some of my lines so you can see this very clearly. Okay. So this plane here going back in space is what the spine is going to sit on. So the, oh, the spine sits in here like this. I'm going to do a cross section of it if you cut it off, which we have to perceive it that way, right? Well, there's where the spine sits. Now, one of the things to notice about this front angle is the spine sits at a strong angle, the lumbar. Uh, it's, in order to meet that in there, it would be like the angle I've got this stick right here. So like that, it's not vertical, it's a strong curve. Now, the other wonderful thing about our measuring system is the height of the pelvis, if you drop a vertical line through your X on the bottom, we're going to get to the ischium. The ischium, it's got to come up a little bit from our construction block about there. So if you notice I came up a little bit, the ischium does not go to the bottom of this cube. It's a little bit shorter, but you'll get familiar with this measuring system and all of this will make a lot of sense to you. So the ischium is going to be here. Now, the ischium, the bottom of the pelvis, is only half as wide as the top of the pelvis. And so being halfway, halfway, drop it, now we've got the width of the bottom. The bottom of the ischium, you get these little curves, okay, the bottom of the ischium. Um, so those curves are going to sit on an angle in here like this. Now, if you notice how I drew the, the ischium, it's a, it's a curve, we think of it like the heel of a shoe, and it's at an angle sitting in the corner of the box. So I have it sitting on it on an angle like this. Okay? So we're going to do the same on the other side. If you notice, the ischium is coming up to the pubic bone, as far as that construction line that we're using. And this one is coming to our construction line here. Again, this measuring system after you do it about 10 times, you're gonna get real familiar with these placements. So already it looks like a pelvis. And it's all we got in is a few lines for the top and the width of the bottom, and it already begins to take shape. Now, we talked about the, the um, sacrum, the pubic bone. Now here's the pubic synthesis. So make two little lines one on the left and the right side of your construction line. Okay, they only come down to about there. Now I'm going to use a, a concave line and connect it to the curve of the ischium that way and do the same on this side. And so now you get the feel of the placement of the ischium. Now, the Anterior superior iliac spine, the one I'm showing you here on the left, remember we said there's a crest on the top of this pelvis. So what you've got to do is you've got to draw another line. It gets very thin in the back and gets wide, about as wide as a finger in the front. It makes a curve as it comes to the um, point of our construction line, pretty much exactly the way that I've got it there. So I'm going to do the other one on this side. And this, this stuff, you want to practice with it. When you're through doing this sort of thing from the video, you want to do this again and again and again until you get very familiar with this. Watch the little curve I'm putting on the end. Things with the body flow and move into things next to them. Nothing just ends in a void. There's a design to the whole thing. Okay. So there's the crest of our pelvis. I'm taking this very first one and spending some time on it uh, very slowly to walk you through it. The next ones I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of put them in. Uh, but now is what I'm doing is boxing out the pelvis to see its general shape. So you're going from the Y point there to the ischium. So now we've got the pelvis boxed out. So, one of the things I want you to see about this boxed out pelvis is it looks like this. Here's our general mass for the pelvis. My center line, if I drop down my halfway points, again, this is a longhand version doing something shorthand, but just to show you, 
a simple system. This is our general shape of the entire thing. There's your general mass two-dimensional concept, okay? So in other words, this distance, it'd be like blocking it out like this, to this, to this, to this, is that. This is half the distance of that. So this, this is the big picture you want to keep in mind. This is how we're going to start to generalize. It's not too difficult from that point in order to make our curves and turn it into a three-dimensional image and then say our pelvic points are here and my next pelvic point is here. Okay, so I can now open it up three-dimensional and I can say this point is here, that point is there. So we're going to take something that's complex eventually and throw them in gestures that are quite simplistic and loose, but we're going to follow the same idea. Now, with all of this in mind, there is an inlet here, the opening of the pelvis, and it follows the curve of the sacrum like this, and it rolls around like this and connects to the top part of the pubic bone like this. The one on the other side does the same. So it does that. And that's the inlet. All of you have seen the opening, right? Um, now, on the sides here, we, we've got our anterior superior iliac spine. Now we've got to create the anterior inferior iliac spine in order to connect the muscle of your leg. Um, so with that, it follows off the crest. Now watch what will happen. This comes in about as far as this at a deeper angle, okay? So in other words, it's breaking in from my construction block and, and widening the top and narrowing the bottom. Okay. Now, from that, this is going to angle in, and the second the point angles out a little bit like this. Hopefully you can see it there. It's small even on this drawing, but in other words, this is angling in, angles out. Remember that kind of feel. The acetabulum is where your leg bone comes out, and it's going to start about just underneath the inferior point, and it comes around, and it doesn't come out really further than our construction line. It stays bound, the top part comes out a little more, but not much, because of the angle it's on. So this is the acetabulum, okay? The acetabulum is right, I think this is pretty close. If I take that distance, it usually goes to the crest of the pelvis, which it does. So in other words, this is this is half the distance, this is the middle. Um, and then normally is what happens, there's a little line that connects this and it sticks out a little bit, how the leg will go in. So that's basically it. So I'm going to do this one a little quicker. So this fouls in quite quick. It veers out for our inferior point. I'll get rid of that line so you can see it, because it's all very small. And then again, our acetabulum start the curve inside our construction line, and if you want, let it widen at the top, like I'm doing. Widen a little bit at the top. If you do them quicker, sometimes it's a lot easier. And then this widens out a little bit. So that's the front view of our pelvis, okay? So there's a lot of ways for shorthand. So in the end, this opening here is going to become real important. Now there's a couple other little lines I forgot. From the pubic bone, it's very straight. Off of that straight line, there's a concave. And it connects to the acetabulum. This one would start here and curve down like this. So what it does is it thrusts out the pubic bone pubic bone just a little bit because of the way the curve is. It's a little hard to see here, but um, I'm going to mention it to you more in class and uh, you'll be able to see it a little easier. So this opening becomes important. So landmarks of the figure, anterior, superior iliac spine, pubic bone, okay? You, right? It's a little bit above the ischium. Eventually, you're going to get what's known as the engroinal ligament that smooths all of this out, and it does this. There's the opening of the pelvis. So this wouldn't be here, right? And so now we've got it in a three-dimensional equivalent. 
This is moving around, which puts the sacrum in here. I'm just going to indicate it subtly. So these would come up, these would be here. So basically you get this sort of configuration. Once we get the leg bones in, which are going to come out this way, I just want to show you the shape. So this is going to do this. So in the end, this is going to be wider, and the general shape is going to look like this, giving us narrower at the waist, wider at the great trochanter, and it will do this. And eventually the legs are going to come up and around. And that's our generalization of the pelvis and also our major mass conception for the pelvis from the front view. There's other ways to tackle it, and I'll talk about that in the future. Our, we're going to come up with the same shape for our back view. So come up with a box. Check our distances. See how close we are? Oh, not bad. Okay, so you come up with your other box exactly like the front becomes the back. Now we're going to take the same as we did before, come up with your center. Once you got your center, the front, the back is quite a bit like the front. So our ischium is a third on the horizontal direction. So what we need to do is come up with an X. Remember with our X, I want to make sure it's in the middle. I know it's a little high, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, So once you have your X, take a vertical from the center of it and bring it down to our halfway point like this. Remember, this is the easy way of finding a third. Take your center line, run a diagonal. Where, if you got confused with the first one, our first big X we put on there, where this angle we just made meets that X right here, drop a vertical. So right there, and right there. When you check that, this distance should be equal to this distance, which is equal to that distance, and so you've got it all right, and so it's an easy third. Okay. Um, our pubic bone we knew is halfway down those other two cranium lengths. So find your halfway. Now we know now from the back view, remember this thing is a spherical triangle. These were concaves from the front, so from the back there it's a convex. It's curving like this. It's a little angular. There's different ways of doing it. You'll find your own. But most, mostly know that it's, it's convex rather than concave. So I like to use an angle here and start it off like with an angle. And then I like to kind of bring it through with a little more of a curve to my point. So So you get that feel to it. Any way you travel, it wants to be convex, and it wants to be a third. Okay. Our pubic bone, we know where it is. I'm just going to indicate it, not with a double line this time from the back view. You only see the ridge of it, so it's a little bit different in that regards. Our posterior, 
inferior iliac spine is again in an eye width, exactly like this was in an eye width. Do the same, do the same. The height of it is a quarter up of the hole, so make a little mark of where that might be. Okay, so with that in mind, just like the front view, start with your high point or whichever way you want to attempt this and bring your curve around. And I'm going to do the same on the other. Okay, so we got the part, the beginning of the crest. This, this one, my center point was off, was too high, so I'm going to bring it down a bit. Okay, so here's where it differs now from the back, from the front. So we're going to mark from our center, we're going to mark about half of this distance. We're going to make a point, all right? Because the spine now is going to overlap the ischium. Or in the front, if you notice, the spine's out here. The back, if you notice these lines tapering in, that, that's because they're going to overlap. So this is coming to about here. This is coming to here. So now the one on this side, here's our crest, here's one plane, two planes, and now this plane is going to curve around, but from the back it does this. It goes to about there, angles, and when it gets to my midway point, I'm going to make a very little, very little angle outward, very little. So this is the movement, okay. So you want to get familiar with that movement. My major turn coming in to about here, over, and slight angle out, okay? Now, just to clarify it, make it a little easier, I want to get rid of these lines. Okay, so, okay, so we can see it a little clearer, right? Everybody can see it. So, once, twice, and in. Now, the interesting thing with the back of the spine, it's very thick. And maybe you can see it here. And definitely check it out when we're in class. This is really thick. It's more of a couple finger widths, okay? And it takes, the crest is taking very narrow and then widens very abruptly and turns back in. So the line that you draw is going to look like this. It starts very narrow at the crest, very abrupt out, and very quick turn in. So very much like that, and it's going to come a little below your construction line, okay? Because it's curving under. So my little angle suggests a curve. Angles are curves, as you know. And so this is coming through the same way, abrupt angle out, abrupt angle in. And so it gives us the feel of the posterior superior iliac spine. Now, with our height, we drop the line exactly like we did from the front. I'm not going to extend it all the way down. We already talked about this. On the front one, the back is the same. The ischium does not go to the bottom of the pelvis. It stays about where I've got it. So it stays about there. So rather than running the line all the way across, we are going to keep it simple. Okay. So with that in mind, we, we talked about the ischium, and we said that the ischium sits in this as a curve, like the heel of your shoe, at an angle, sitting at this angle in the corner of our width to our height. Just trying to get a better angle to the curve. And there's the ischium. So as soon as you get a little bit of the top and the bottom, your mind fills in the rest and you can see the shape of the pelvis now from the back view. Um, we are going to box it out because getting familiar with this shape is all important because that's going to become our shorthand to all of this with just your drawings. That shape is crucial to get in your mind this as being midway of that shape is crucial to get into your mind. And um, I'm going to show you in a second other ways of attempting this real quickly. So anyways, so far we've got it moving. So we need the pubic synthesis. Here it is. 
pubic symphysis, as we talked about symphysis, the coming together of two things. And now is what happens is we can complete the ischium by pulling this line down and taking this one and pulling it down. And this is the pubic angle, the triangle, okay? So you get the pubic bone, which is more visible, of course, from the front. You get the pubic synthesis and the pubic angle, okay? All going together, putting all of our pieces in. Now, from the acetabulum from the back view is in the same place, but we don't see it opening up that way. And this construction line is different. So now is what we do is we start with the construction line way up here from the side of the pelvis, about where I've got it, and it takes a radical curve out, slightly, very little bit beyond the line, because this comes out beyond the line slightly, and then it angles in, and that's all you see of the acetabulum. You don't see the inside of it. And then it abruptly curves in like that. So it comes from up here, angles in, and around. Uh, so it protrudes out. So that is the great trochanter, and we'll easily know that the neck of it comes out this way. Now, it makes a, a very interesting angle that all of you have seen on the pelvis. From the back view, this piece curves around this piece, and that plane tucks in on the inside. So this one, I'm going to do the same. It starts from here, an abrupt angle out, out just a little ways, in, an abrupt turn meeting our ischium. So then this piece from the back seems to curve behind there, and this piece comes in front of it, okay, is the idea. Okay, there is our general sense. The hardest point of the pelvis, may it be what I'm about to show you on the back view or the side view in a minute, is the line that I'm about to draw. This one you've got to play with over and over to get yourself familiar with. I had to, everybody else does, and it takes a little bit of doing. This is the anterior superior. This is the inferior. This part's easy. It just angles this way. This is the inferior point. Comes from the middle of this, angles out. That's the inferior point. Superior, inferior, super, superior, inferior, superior. This one, a little harder to see, unfortunately. This line now doubles back on itself about like this. Makes a curve back and then rounds out like this, comes into about here, and swings, giving us the tuberosity of the ischium, which I didn't mention to you guys at the beginning, but I'm about to. So in other words, this makes a curve like this. There's a little spine that sticks out here, and this curves around like this and meets it. Okay, the tuberosity of the ischium, the tuberosity of the ischium is the back part of it, and there's a thickness to it, okay? This thickness, it becomes important when we get into the muscles. From the sides, you don't see it. From the back side, you do see it, and it's very pronounced. Um, and this is the, um, the spine or something, hold on. Okay, this is known as the ischial spine. It's going to come important when we do the hamstring muscles. They are going to connect to this point, so you do want to get familiar with it. Here's superior point, inferior point, the curve I made, this curve coming around like you see, coming to our um, ischial spine. So again, you got to play with this. This ischial spine, if you get it right, wants to be a touch higher than I've got it. Okay, so I would say if you're going to, if you do it right in a safe point, it should be, really be above the construction line, and mine's a little bit below, but I'm having a hard time bringing it up, so I'm going to leave it there. So all well if that point is a little higher. It makes this piece work out the way that it ought to, but I'll try to catch it on this one. I do it better if I'm not talking about it. So this goes up, and it will do that, okay? That one's a lot better. 
So hit it above the line, bring back in on the inside of this line, and then this does exactly the way it, it goes, just the way you see it. That becomes our ischia. Okay. That then completes the back view of the pelvis. So remember your parts. Anterior, superior, around the front here. Uh, posterior, superior, inferior. And, uh, oh, your construction lines over the sacrum would now go up like this. Eventually, you've got five fused together vertebrae, and these construction lines would do this. The top of it would be here from the back view. It would look like that, and these lines go up. These, of course, are going to foul our form, and they're going to curve concave, right? And so all works out. If I get this a little neater, you'll see it. So from your center line, this is going to come down, 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 down. Okay. So to simplify this in terms of a shorthand, I talked a, a little bit about George Loomis, or Andrew Loomis. Now you know about this shape. I'm not going to measure it now. We're just going to draw it. And I need you to practice with this um, over and over and over and over again. I need the shorthand version and I need the longhand version uh, worked with. So Andrew Loomis would work with ellipses like this for the pelvis. He would do this. Now, it was an ingenious way of working with the pelvis. He would use two discs, so he could do them from any angle. He could do it this way, and so if this was a three-quarter view, he could overlap that one, and then he would know this is the pubic bone here, and then this would be the front coming this way, right? So he can turn it in any direction. If this is the back view, here's our sacrum, so here it is here, Sacrum is here, okay? Um, is this angle, if you imagine a little bit of flesh on there, this, you could do this. And it's very easy to adapt, okay? Eventually, you come with your high point, you bring this around, you come with your high point, you bring that around. The leg is going to stick out here, and so eventually, with the, the leg is going to be the widest of the great trochanter coming out in this direction. So eventually our Y point's gonna do this. This would be a little higher. Eventually muscles are gonna connect. And we're on our way to a very simple shape and you're gonna start to get the backside of somebody. And it's built on this sort of simple disc shape. Um, it was said in the past that if you gave an artist two triangles, they'd give you back a pelvis. So now I'm showing you some simple ways of doing something incredibly complicated. You need to understand this so when we deal with muscles, you know exactly where they're going to connect and what they're going to do. And then you want to begin to simplify it as much as you can for gesture drawings and memorizing these points so that eventually we know where, how low this is and that we know that at that point is going to be our great trochanter. So right there is the great trochanter, right there is the great trochanter, and we know all of our points of reference, okay? Um, anyways, the two triangles the artist of the past talked about is a triangle that would go from this point of the ischium, I'm sorry, of the anterior superior iliac spine, going to here, the center of our pubic bone. That's the first triangle they talked about. Now this triangle is on a front plane. This pelvis is going back in space, so this is on a front plane. The second triangle they talked about is the ischium. Now look what happens, and this is what you've got to memorize. The ischium falls, as we know, at the anterior superior iliac spine, and it comes down to the pubic bone. It's just a small version. That's the two triangles. However, the two triangles are in space and you can turn them and move them depending on how you turn and move your space. So if you were to simplify something like this with triangles, you would say, 
Here's my, my line that's representing this. Here's one point. Here's another point. Here's my center. Here's my pubic bone. And so here's my triangle going to the pubic bone. This is a third of that, so we're just going to guess now in this case. And then we're going to run this to this. And so this is set up in here, right? We know that up here is our high point, and it's going to be our midway point. We know that this comes out a little bit. So when we simplify and put in just a generalized curve, we can do this. And we know that this curve comes over a little bit, like I just did. And so you find your high point, and you generalize this curve. And you start to get the feel of this in a very, very, very generalized way. We know that this is the high point. This is the high point. That's roughly now the half. This distance is the half of this distance. Uh, this is our Y point coming out, our Y point. So eventually when we develop it, you develop it a little bit, uh, things can fall right in place. This is wider, this is narrower, like this. Our angles are already in place in a very generalized, simplified way. Our ischium we know is here, and we know this one is here on our construction line. We know the synthesis is here, this is here, and our Y point in, in boxing it up. And there is our pelvis. Very simple, very complex. But this curve picks up this curve. This comes around to the top plane of the pubic bone. Top plane, bottom plane straight, and then curves back a little bit to our ischium. Acetabulum, generalize it, bringing in for our inferior point. So you can do this in about three minutes. This takes you a whole lot longer. Once you memorize the placements, this is a training block tool, and you want to do it over and over till you can get these in your mind, and then you want to practice this so that in, in the class you, you know just how to place them in. And we'll talk about them from other angles, but right now there's so much to talk about that I've got to keep it short and sweet. I've got to get you a profile So that you can see all three of them together. So, with the profile, it's a little different than the fronts and the back. You're going to come up with just two stacked boxes. Everybody should have two boxes. This is representing the side. <clears throat> like what we did with the others, I do need you to find the centers. Through the center, I need you to drop a vertical. My center is off a little, but I just want to make sure what I've got is close. If it's not, it's going to throw me off. So if yours is off, actually the X was closer to the center than I thought. If you're standing off to the side, it's a little hard to get centers of things, but I think this is better. You want it to be close uh, because these shapes are quite symmetrical. Okay. Now, the profile of the the profile of the pelvis is kind of complicated, but is what we want to do is, is watch our landmarks, and we want to relate them to these two. So we know a few things, and if you just look at them, you guys should be able to think and know some things. This is our anterior superior iliac spine, and it falls along. Therefore, we know it's here. I'm going to do a pelvis looking to the left. Um, 
So we know that that's there. We can see where this is placed. I placed it above the line, the curve. So that tells me from this angle, the anterior superior iliac spine is placed there. Okay. Now you want to keep thinking in different angles. So this is this is this now from this angle. Okay. The other thing before I start to develop this real quick is the pubic bone fell along this midway line. Now from the profile a lot of us drop that line slightly. Slightly. Like this. So here's my center. I dropped it a little. Uh, because usually from the side, unless you're looking up at somebody, this lower part doesn't appear to be too big. And so by dropping it a little, actually will make the drawing a lot better. So that's your pubic bone, pubic bone, pubic bone. Okay, so side view. We know that the ischium is here, and we know that it's going to be up about here. Okay, so we can, I could already, if I wanted to, I could already draw the curve in for the ischium. So think about those things on, those diff, on these angles. Okay. So with that in mind, is what I'm going to do is this crest, there is a slight bend in it. From the side, it almost looks like there's not a bend in it. But is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get over here, and I think you'll be able to see it a little better. And this is going to come up about a quarter of the way, right? Um, so there's a slight deviation to the line. Now this isn't all that crucial. I'm going to do it like that. And then is what's interesting is this line underneath the crest from this angle does this. It makes a, whoops, makes a curve here. Slip of the stick. So it makes a curve here like this. It gets very narrow a little triangle, and then it does this, and then this crest just rolls around like this, and right near the end of the block, because of this area of the uh, spine, it straightens up like this, okay? So there's my break, so it's right there. This is the top plane. So this piece is turned a little towards us, the way that it would be. You would see the spine, and it would do that. Now, we're going to take this front line, and so now we're looking at this here, and as what happens is the pubic bone is going to be here. Pubic bone, pubic bone, all on this line, so I know it's going to hit here. Now, on the male pelvis, these two would be lined up. On the female pelvis, they're not. I would have to put a slight angle at about like this to the whole thing. This would too, the ischium would have a slight tilt to it. I'm not gonna do that with this one. I'm gonna keep it like this until you can get this understood because it is challenging from, this, from a profile. So is what happens is this angles in like this about the way I've got it. And then we come to the inferior point. It's right there. And it'll do this, it'll veer in. You'll get to the acetabulum like this, which is um, here. You're seeing this now from the side, so you see a little bit of the ridge of it. And then it gradually makes a deviation, like I said, you gotta play with this, to the pubic bone. But that's exactly how the line would look, okay? The pubic bone would be on an angle and do that, okay? So this you have to get familiar with. You gotta, you gotta work with it in your sketchbooks. Do many drawings, let me see them if you run into problems. But mostly this angle is gonna be crucial in this point, and this being in the right place to this and to this. It's the relationships that are ultimately gonna be the most important. Illustrators will just straighten this right out, make a curve here, and then they, they know the muscle connects a little lower than that. Um, <clears throat> so they got it all memorized, but they generalize it. So with that in mind is what I'm going to do with, with the other side. Well, let's do it this way. So I'm going to put the ischium in. 
it's going to go in here as a curve. Now it's facing, I'm thinking of the angle. This is facing this way, right? So the angle is doing this. If you can see this thing, it sometimes gets to be a little challenging, but you'll see it in class. This isn't straight. It angles at an angle out. So I'm trying to sense there's an angle doing this rather than this. So again, you want to play with these angles. Then is what's going to happen is, like this is going to connect, the ischium is going to come from here, a little concave to convex. And that would be your line. That's this from the side view. Okay. So with that in place, the tuberosity of the ischium, this thickness here, you're going to really notice it from the back view. And I'm just going to lay in the tuberosity. It's going to be an angle about like that. That tuberosity of the ischium, which I'll put in in a minute, is going to be about that wide. Now that's a construction point for us from the profile. Because if I take this point, which is this point from the side, this is a guideline uh, that the classical artists have come up with in order to place the acetabulum. Then we know the acetabulum does, doesn't come any further than that when it's being placed from the profile. So this line from your widest point of the pelvis coming down to the tuberosity of the ischium is going to be an important line once I put in the acetabulum. I'm going to hold off on it for a minute. So anyways, this is doing this. Then this line, these lines are kind of similar. It makes an angle coming in. That's this now from the side comes in. Eventually, it makes a little curve here. The sacrum is coming, this thing is coming from here. Remember, it's rooted on this line, which would be way up here, or it'd be like here if I drew through it, right? But I'm trying to imagine through it, and that's why in the classical times I use this as a construction, because now I can imagine through exactly where the spine is going to go. So these became ways of building your imagination or building your skills. So this comes down the ischium, does this, and it hits the construction block here. And then it rolls along and doesn't curve in much. It does something about like this. And on this side, it comes in and comes around like this. This piece comes around like I've got it. Comes around and here's this hard angle. Now we're doing it here. Here's our little protrusion of that spine. It's right on this line, right? Above the line, above the line if you get it right. If you can get those points right, they seem like, why in the world would you worry about getting that right? The reason why a person would worry about getting that right is because there's a muscle that's going to connect to it and it sets off a whole dynamics between a muscle connecting here and a muscle connecting here. If it's too low, it throws off everything. So we try to get them close if possible. So that's it. That's it from the side other than the acetabulum. The acetabulum doesn't come any lower than this. Not much, if any. And then it rides no further than this and it's quite large. I'm bringing it to this because this edge would be the thickness of the little bone that's there and it would do this. If you get it about right, this distance, like I said, should go to about here, which is pretty close. So that's your pelvis from the side. Now, the things that we want to be aware of, and then I want to move on real quickly because time's going by really quick, but this is the heart of what I need you to do, um, is what we want to memorize is this sacrum is coming out at the same point. Um, pubic bone to the bottom of the sacrum. Lining on a vertical line, the highest point to this line of our ischium. Okay, always the same, always the same. Those points, I need you to work over and over and over. I'm going to get a sip of water. And what I'm going to do is construct really quick the relationship of this to the rib cage.
with this next set of drawings, I'm going to do them a little quicker, uh, especially the first part, because time. But what I want to do is start with the profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my width. I got to make it a little smaller because they're going to come down lower. So is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to have you guys do this quickly as well. Is what we need is two boxes for head, neck, two boxes for rib cage, two boxes for pelvis. So we need six. So on your piece of paper, leave room for your width to go down six times, okay? And I'm just going to kind of quickly place them in. And again, you want them close. They don't have to be perfect. Here's our six boxes. We already talked about the head. I am going to put an X in here though on the second one, just so that you can see some guidelines. We know that our cranium, because this is our measurement, our measuring system, we know that the cranium sits in here, right? And we know that the chin on the profile would be a little shorter than our halfway point because of the way that it measures. So we talked all about this, so I'm not going to go through that. And we said we could use an egg in here as a ball and an egg for our simple construction. Because we said that the head was, this is five eyes, this is six, and this is seven. Which now, if you measured that, it would be. So I could do it real quick and I know it would work because we understand the measuring system and we already checked it over and over and we know it works. Angle of jaw, and you know the jaw is midway and this is close to midway so I'm going to keep it. And then this angle somewhat fouls this angle if you were to put it in there. Okay, So we can somewhat quickly come up with a, a feel. This is the curve of where our mastoid process would be. So all that can happen quite quickly. We talked about the other day, we talked about the upper part of the rib cage is on an angle and it starts about here on our construction line. We're trying to memorize these things. We're trying to say the opening of this rib cage at about an angle like this and coming down to here, um, where are those points in light of the, of the head and the back of the head. Keep thinking about this. I mean, um, you know, you could take this class and you can just kind of draw along and not think about this stuff. But the reason you're working in your sketchbook when I'm done with all of this is to commit this to memory. So when you're in class, I can, you know, if I know a skull is here, I can drop a vertical line and I know my rib cage only comes out to that point on a standing figure. And then I know my manubrum starts roughly just a little narrower than where the skull is. And so you know where these points are. So we said this is the top of the rib cage. This is the manubrum. There's slight different angles. So this to this to the sternum, slightly different angle. And again, we went one angle, two angles, slightly different. That came all the way to our construction point, And then we dropped the vertical of the insiform cartilage. Now, the widest point of the rib cage, and you've got to keep thinking about these things, um, because this curve here, if you're to make it up, you're trying to, you're, you know, you're making up something, but then you know, where is this angle? How far out is this in light of this? And this is lower. It's important. Eventually, muscles come down. The, the, everything's about relationships in the figure. These things don't need to be perfect, but these points need to be perfect. Um, so that, that's doing that. 
so our tenth rib is here. So the rib cage rolls along the edge of this construction block, and about here it breaks away. And then it begins to come down to the middle. There's some cartilage we talked about that comes out, and then this quickly cuts in and comes down and around, giving us our rib cage. So we got our points of measure. So we've got one, two, three, four head lengths. This is almost in the middle. The spine, which I'm going to talk about a little bit simultaneously, the atlas bone is dead center of this ball. So it's going to fall right here. This is the atlas bone. The atlas bone, as we talk about, the atlas bone holds up, atlas held up the world, atlas holds up your head. The bone would look somewhat like this. And there'd be an opening in it. Okay? That's there. Okay? Now, the axis, the axis, the next one is, in, is here. And it's got an opening. You'll see it on the skeleton in the class. And it's got a little spike that comes up here. And I showed you the spike earlier. So what happens is this one goes under this one. So then this one places in here. And you're going to see very little of it come through. So then this piece comes through that piece and your head rotates and these have little rockers on the bottom so they turn. So basically that's how it's going to work at the top part of your spine. Um, so middle of the ball falls atlas. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, we'll come back to it in a minute. This is coming through, coming through, every, got, everybody's in place. So here's our pelvis. So just like what we did before, we're going to do it a second time, but I'm going to do it a little quicker. And I'm going to have you try to foul. I'm going to try to get you to do this over and over and over every time we get to the muscles. You should have done it at least 10 times uh, so you get very used to it. So we know already that our ischium is like this. We know that the pubic bone is a little bit lower than that X, right? I'll talk about that. This is our center line. Center line is saying this is the high point of the pelvis. Look where it falls. Find that. It's falling right down the center of, of that balancing act is the high point of the pelvis. Isn't that interesting? And that's, what, that's what a measuring system does. It tells you where pieces land. So it's all balanced. Okay. So anyways, the pelvis is going to be in there like that. So we can tell now that our, our point of the anterior superior angle is here. This is a little smaller, but we already did it larger. So, um, so now, our, now we're looking for our quarter of the way up, which really means middle of that line. Um, now we're going to take this and, and bring this up with a slight curve, a slight deviation. I'm going to try to get it just a little bit better. Maybe Sometimes talking about it. You can stand on the other side. Okay. So I'm going to do it this way. You might see a little easier. So I'm going to do that. In here, it comes up radically fast at a concave. A little ridge quickly emerges away. And this piece curves like that, right? So we know that this is swinging around, and we know that it reaches a vertical right near the end of our construction block, right? So all of that should be pretty clear to us. Now we're going to bring in our inferior point. Now I'm, I'm using a line like I did before, not exactly on the construction line. It's not, it's not going quite as angled as that. I'm bringing it to the left of that. And then this, i got to be careful not to go down too low. And then the pubic bone, I'm sorry, the inferior point, 
Just want to get it as clear as I can for you. So it's coming like this. Inferior point comes in the curve of the acetabulum and then the slight curve you see from the angle of the pubic bone like this coming out in, a, in an angle here, right? Okay, same thing in miniature. So all of us are doing it twice. Get it in place. Ischium falls in this construction area at this angle, looking in this direction, as we talked about. And then this line, concave, steep concave, convex. So again, at the beginning of the class, I talked about the power of using concaves and convexes. Everything's about that. The ischium, the sacrum is going to hit its full point about here, I would say, and it's in a little bit, right? It's, there's a little thickness there, like we did on that one, and so you try to feel out this angle of that curve, rides along, and comes this way. There's a certain character to it. From this angle, I'm having a hard time feeling it out, but that's all right. I will get it to you. But after a while, there's a certain feel to these angles, and you kind of get them, you, you get them or you miss them. But it hits there, and then it curves like, that's the right feel, okay. So it does that. And then this one is going to start, technically it's way up here, but then it's coming around, and it gets narrow and very narrow and curves this way. That's doing that, and now we talked about this all-important line crossing over. This is the inferior point here of the posterior. This angle doing this close to the tuberosity, doing this angle, this angle, trying to keep them somewhere. Um, this will curve up a little bit, and then curve around, come up to our point here. Our spine curves in a little bit and picks up the tuberosity of the ischium. Okay, so that's it in miniature. I try to get this angle here. This angle usually isn't vertical, and so that's what I'm trying to get a little more accurate for you. It's a little bit of an angle going out. That's better. Okay, that's it. Okay, so then we know our construction line that we talked about from our Y point to the tuberosity of the ischium tells us now exactly where the acetabulum sits. So, that's our little pelvis from the side. Just gotta clean it up a little bit. Just want it to be as clear as you can get it. Okay, so that's doing that. Now, the spine is what's gonna happen is, this is, this point, oop, I got rid of my front view, but anyways, it was on a little angle, if you remember, the top of the, is, uh, the sacrum went like this. Here's my construction line from the front view, that, that was front, so you're trying to think through things. And I was mentioning that this sits at an angle, because there's a very, the, the lumbar has got a very strong angle to it. So, is what's going to happen is this cervical, the first seven vertebrae, start here, and, it, and there's a slight angle to it. And I'll show this to you in just a little diagram in a minute. So, there's a slight angle doing this. So, it's coming this way. And this is our seventh vertebrae spine right here. Uh, which is going to be a landmark for us to look for. It's visible on every model. It comes off of that angle. It actually comes off from here, but it does come down to, it feels like it comes down to there. It looks like that. So, with this in mind, is what I'm going to do is do a little diagram here. Feel free to do this yourself. I want to show you something in terms of how these pieces line up. So this is the cervical, uh, the first seven vertebrae. If I was doing it within this, it would start about here. 
and the angle would come like this, very slight, and it would end here. There's such a slight angle to that top part, but you want to get a feel for it. It's not vertical, okay? The, the thoracics does this. It starts here. I'm going to make little divisions. And we talked about this angle coming out, right, and around. So on this little schematic, it would come out like this. And then it would ride along the edge. And then it would come to like here. That would be this traveling through. Starts off kind of thin up here, probably a little thinner than I've got it. And it would come through and it starts to get thicker like this there'd be vertebrae here, it would come through like this, and there'd be an angle here. And so that would do that, and then the lumbar, very curved because it's what's supporting everything, this would take a full, a strong angle this way, and then really curve down like this, uh, if I had it right, my dimensions, I'm watching this as my center line so that you can see the movement of the spine. I'm going to try to do it in here simultaneously. Then uh, the sacrum is here, and it does this. It comes like that, like we're doing, gets our construction line, and then curves in, or curves this way very little. So, there's seven bones, as you know, in this one, 12 in the thoracics, five in the lumbar, and then you got the sacrum. We see it as one piece. Doctors, of course, break it down into five and then four of the coccyx. That's the movement of the spine. See how tight these curves are on the lower part and how less up here, okay? So, to get this right then, this feel of this curve has to come out like this does. That's what I wanted you to see. This is going to come out in a round and tuck in. This would be now, you wouldn't see it, it's going through the pelvis, right? And it would connect to there like that. So this is swinging around very close to this line, not as close as this little diagram, but about like what I've got there would be about accurate. And this comes around, and it swings through and picks up this curve like this does. Very serpent-like. This one, this, this lower part, if I put thicknesses to them, they get thicker and thicker as they go down, like this. And this would become very thick. And this would become, this would be a very strong curve. This would be very much more graceful. And then you would get the triangle, the spherical triangle of the sacrum, right? So back here it would connect right where I've got it, right where I've got it. This meets this, flows around. This bone now goes like this, would hit here roughly on the pelvis, and then gracefully tuck in to there. So I'm going to try to make it a little darker so you can see it. So it would do that and move through. And that's the spine. Now, is what I need you to get familiar with is the cervical, the thoracics, the lumbar. If you can, roughly their placements uh, and how the center lines fall. See, they're, once they thicken, they're pretty close. Um, and trying to get a feel of how these things connect, okay? Artists of the past got very familiar with this line from various angles. And then, of course, off of it, they're drawing their rib cage. And we know that it's connecting right here on the lumbar, okay? And, and then we know the height of this and over and so forth. So, anyways, hopefully you got this down because I'm going to get rid of this one. And I've got to move on to the other two views really quick to sum this up.
Okay, so we're going to go th the side because of going through the spine took me a little longer. But these here will go through pretty quick. So now on this one you're doing two stacked boxes. And I'm going to say I'm going to try to simplify this stuff for myself. Okay, that's pretty close. So you come up with the two stack boxes, which is representing the head, of course. Now, with a measuring system, So you're doubling this, so if you take half of this and bring it out here, and this half, you got them right, hopefully, and bring it out here. So we're going to end up with six boxes down here. Hopefully it all works out to this. Oh, I don't want to do that, sorry. Got carried away with my lines. I'm just going to make sure I'm close. Sure, I'm close. Hardest part is is getting these boxes set up. Anyways, they do take a little time um, to set up, but as you can see, it's going to pay big dividends in the end. So the, just keep thinking it, of it as training wheels, and go through the effort because it's going to help you memorize all these important landmarks I'm giving you. You can try doing this stuff on your own. I did at the beginning when I was a student. And I didn't know anything about this classical approach. And, um, oh my gosh, you can spend forever trying to do anatomy stuff, but you can't relate it to anything. So you can only do certain things that you see and copy. This will break you from that um, once you understand it. So here's my four for the rib cage, and we shall come up with four. I'll, I'll be out of your way in a minute. Oops. And our four for the pelvis. Okay. Okay, it's all pretty close. So this is the front view. So, our measuring system, cranium measurements. We know the chin's going to come down to here. We know that on a front view, that this angles in a little bit like this. I'm just going to do this. But we can use the ball and the egg. The egg is very important. The ball behind is bigger and it would overlap about there. It's important to have overlapping on these things because it's going to give you depth even on these simple shapes. Okay, so our simple configuration of the ball and the egg. As you can see, opening of the rib cage comes up. We talked all about this, comes up to about here comes in about, about as wide as this. I might use a simple construction line to make the ellipse in the middle um, so I can kind of bring it around. OK, 
Okay, so there's our opening, keep relating things, they're the same. Um, we talked about, I'm not going to put all of this stuff in, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to generalize the shape. We talked about a manubrium that was there and came down about this far. I'm just going to place in a little curve and so my charcoal's got a little spot on it that won't change. And then we talked about the gladiolus did this, got wider at the bottom, and then we talked about the all-important xiphoid process or ensiform cartilage. If all of you remember why was this important, it was important because it's our widest point of the rib cage. So we go for it, the widest point of the rib cage, which isn't touching our construction blocks. We talked about where the tenth rib is, right about here, a little right of our center line, a little right of the center of the block. So now it's easy to take from our center of our ellipse and then constructing this line, right? So we'll do the same on the other side. And then we talked a lot about the opening of this cartilage. I talked about how the way I like to construct it is like this. I use two convexes. This is representing the seventh vertebrae. And then another one. It's how I kind of do it because of the way the ribs look. We talked all about that the other day. So there's our simple construction. Now, I'm, I'm drawing this all out for you again, just so that you can see the relationship of the pelvis to the rib cage. Um, it's about a fist, they say. If you take your fist and go like this, that's what fits in there. Not as much as you might think. And so I'm going to go through this real quick. And it's good for you guys to do this over and over and over again. So bear with me. If I was in the classroom, I'd be asking you the questions of what falls here, what falls on this midway point. And at this point, you should understand it that this is the pubic bone, right? So you want to know that that's the pubic bone. This is the height of the pelvis, right? The height of the pelvis falls there. We're trying to look for the sacrum. How do you find the sacrum? What is it? Where is it placed? It's a third. So to find our third, we drop the vertical from our X. We took a diagonal from our center, oops, and dropped an angle. Where it crossed this line, and this line of mine is pretty funky. If I cross that wrong, I'm going to throw it off, of course. So it's close, maybe not perfect, but I'm going to leave it that way. So if all of that is right, if you do it right, this should be a third. I'm going to try it into it. Incredibly close. So we shall go for it. So if that's where it starts, we know that our sacrum is going to this point, our midway, right? All of you know concaves, right? We said that the anterior, superior is found in an eye width and it comes up a quarter. Construct this line of the crest. In here, it pulls down to about here, inside this line a little bit, if you remember. And we use convex lines little curves. You'll see this in the skeleton in the class. Look at this surface that I'm drawing. Um, this now I'm putting the front view so it'll help to see why that angle exists. So there's this piece. You got the sacrum. You can see it a little on here. If this is bent like this, this is the sacrum. This is the part we just drew. This angle is back. And this tilts forward. So this, this top piece is this, and this is angling in. See? So 
this lumbar that we just ex we put in sits in here So that sits there. So this angle is like this. In other words, it's like this. So you can see the angle that I've got there. So, so that's, the, that's what you want to get from these different views. This angle is this way. This hits this. So once you know that, when you do this sort of thing, you can, this curve will start to come pretty natural to you. Anyways, the pubic bone, as we mentioned, is only about a half inch on both sides of this um, sacrum. And then down here the same. So that does that. Um, our high point. And the bottom of the sacrum. And the sacrum itself. Our little heel shape on an angle, right? Our synthesis and our concave lines that connect it. The crest of the pelvis. Don't forget it. When we get into the muscles, you got to have it. So this is coming around, wider, curves in, like that. Same on this side. Curves in. Our width of the pelvis, boxing it in, important to do. There's our general shape. Our inlet, follow this curve around, connect it to the top edge of the pubic bone, connect it around. Uh, our angle coming in for the inferior point, out. Like that, the other side the same. Acetabulum sticks out a little bit on top. That's it. Acetabulum. There we are from our front view. So mostly, our again, imagine through. See, this system is so wonderful. Thank the classical draftsman that comes up with this. Because now we can see through, we know where the atlas bone is. Easy to find. We know where the atlas bone is, eventually we know exactly where the trapezius muscle is going to go. You know it's from the, you can see right through it, right? So we know that's there. And so the spine's coming down like this. It starts very narrow, comes in like this. And it would be behind all of this. And then it gets wide here. And I'm going to swing it out a little bit to show a little bit of a curve. And it's going to join here. So if you could see this, in reality, these would have pretty great curves to them. Because is what they do as they really roll out at us, come out, and this is very concave. So this is coming way out, this is curving in, okay? Watch this distance. So again, I'm doing all this so you can see where these points fall, half of, half of a cranium length, right? This is down. So major points, sacrum falls on a cranium length. Cranium length down, uh, manubrum, collarbones, sacrum, the next one, tenth rib, N next one, anterior superior iliac spine, half of the way down, pubic bone. Okay. One last quick view, and then we're going to call it a day. So, our last one. Will I have room for it? I think so.
because the day is getting late and I need you guys to draw, I'm not going to measure these cubes. I'm just going to take them off of what I got. And whatever they are, they are. The only thing I'm going to measure is this distance. Just to check my width. Good, good. Okay, so everything seems good. Okay, things might not be perfect, but enough for you to understand. Back view, posterior. Our simple ball. Midway, we'll guess at it now. Lower part is going to come to here. We talked about this. We talked about this angle of the back of your skull doing this. And now the width of this doing this. And we talked a little bit about other points, but I'm going to skip them at the moment. And a little bit about our jaw. So all of you will remember our simple points here. And we came up with this line for the temporal. And it told us about our parietal eminence. This is important. There's a triangle here in the back of the skull. This is where the spine now connects. So there's your going to be your atlas bone, going to connect right up to the base of that skull, right? So all the same as this. So you come up with how wide, and we draw our ellipse. So we already know about how to find the widest, so I'm going to skip stuff and I'm just going to jump down to the widest, right? All of us know how to find that. We just, we did it a few different times now. So we know this is the widest point of our rib cage. We know that the 10th rib now is here and the 10th rib is here, right? And now we know how to connect this together. All of you should be able to come up with nice rib cages, always in proportion to the head. <clears throat> we know that this rib of the 12th rib is about right here. We talked about it last week. Pelvis. been through the pelvis now many times today. You should be getting good at this. Find your midway point. Midway point. Why are we finding that midway point? As all of you know, we're coming up with the thirds for the sacrum. Thirds, third, we know that. We measured it. I measured it for you over and over. So I don't have to measure it anymore. We know the system is good as gold. And so we know that this is a, kind of goes in and over, in and down. So it's more convex from the backside, right? Now we know where our anterior superior point would be there. We're looking at it from the back view, but that's where it would be. We know that our high point is here and our wide point is a quarter. Up. Oh. 
So place in your crust. Now, the tricky part of the back of our pelvis, this kind of helps to see it a couple of times, of course, at this, at this part of it. So this part should be all very simple. We've done it four times now. This part, we, we talked about this being as wide as this. So we talked about coming in midway on this side, midway on this side, right? And we're bringing the top part in, and then over, and then a slight angle. It's probably too long of an angle, but I'm going to leave it. I mean slight. So that goes this way, in a little bit, and out a little bit. Talked about the spine being very narrow, opening way up strong angle in, going a little below our construction line. And the top of this being about here. Wrong angle. It looked like that. These lines doing this going up, okay? The pubic bone, we know that it's here. We find our ischium, we know where that is, how low it is, we know how to find the ischium now. Be careful with the ischium from the back view because of the tuberosity of the ischium. I run my line right up against this line if you want to error in any direction, error on overlapping it slightly. It, may, it gives more room to do the inside line to get the tuberosity. So, you know, you'll, once you do this a few times, you'll get the idea of it. That'll do that. Box in the pelvis. Pubic synthesis, connect your points. We talked about bringing this line way up here, about midway up, almost to this line. Strong curve to our widest point out, in, and a curve in. Same on the other side. So this curves around, that curves around. Our hardest lines in the whole thing were this, the inferior point. So I'll get rid of some of these construction lines so you can see it a little better. So again, on this side, taking it about midway, there's my inferior point, comes up, makes a curve, come to our little point, if you can, keep it above the line, and then swing it around on the inside like this so that you can get a shape there. That's that one. The one on this side crosses over like that, goes up quickly, curves around our little point, and then the tuberosity of the ischium. Okay, that's it and its completeness is what will happen. Last thing, your spine is going to connect here. It's narrow. It starts to get wider. The seventh vertebrae spine, that is a landmark. Always note it. It's going to fall right there from the back view on this top part. Keep it in mind. This is going to run down and connect.
So I'm going to leave you guys here. Again, keep watching these distances. Use the measuring system over and over si simultaneously while you're using the me measuring system. Do some things from your head, not using the measuring system, keeping your points in mind. Where are they? The width of the head when it comes down. Watch where it hits, right? Watch where the width of the head hits and try to do it from your head. Do these pelvises from its general shape from your head as we talked about earlier. So you're going back and forth between the two, okay? So um, have fun drawing. Um, I know this is a lot, but keep working with it. And I will see you in class on the next day, okay?